I knew that I can't become an entrepreneur, but I became a social entrepreneur. I joined Wipro, and I completed 20 years in this company. But I wanted to be an entrepreneur, so the only way is to do some work for a country by using the technologist in me. So I happened to meet up with uh, a very old scholar who is right now is in 98 years. He showed me a piece of ancient document of the country. It's the old palm leaf manuscript. This is about 350 year old. And uh, he showed me, you, you, you guys working in software companies, you earn a lot of money, but what are you doing for your country? And that is one inflection point which changed the mindset, the thinking. So I started going, looking into my own life. You now, why, why we are born at all, you know? Like, what is the purpose of the life? And uh, it so happened that uh, as soon as he showed me, you know, we saw the value in that, you know, what are the things that have been written in that. And uh, as we see, the, it's all ancient scripts, we see in the discovery that, you know, a lot of scholars going and deciphering the ancient uh, uh, scripts and the epigraphy written on the stones there. So at least in India, we have some people who can uh, currently read uh, some of the ancient scripts. So we thought we will, we will develop a technology which will uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, document that and then put it into a national repository. This was in way back in 95, and then uh, we started, uh, you know, kind of, I, I, I started learning about image processing. And be, through that, I created, I mean, we started a group in Vipro to work on imaging and digital signal processing. So I did not learn from Vipro to do something on my nonprofit, but I learned from the nonprofit and created a group in Vipro. So this is about the belief that you have on a certain idea. It puts you on a firm foundation to create something. So, the two things which I wanted, which I concentrated, one is how do I get, the, get into the source of the knowledge, basically the, the, the ancient manuscripts, and how do we bring it to the current context, contextualizing to the current time. And I couldn't find within my vicinity any organization that shared my vision, so we landed up a uh, couple of my friends working in IBM, Intel, and Wipro. We got together and created an organization called Mahabharata Research Foundation. And uh, this concentrated on uh, the uh, developing, uh, I would say, tools and technologies for preserving the, uh, the ancient heritage of India, basically the, the knowledge, intangible knowledge heritage. And in this process, I went, I traveled across India from Himalayas to Kanyakumari and found what are the different kinds of scripts. I don't know how many of you know that India has got the largest collection of the manuscripts in the world. It's, it's more than... Uh, I mean, at least the estimate says that it is, uh, we have roughly about 30 to 50 million manuscripts in this country scattered across uh, and written in about uh, 30 odd scripts and uh, hundreds of languages. When we visit the place where the manuscript is available, they're not willing to give it to us because they, they have a tendency that it's been, you know, like uh, preserved from the generation, handed up from generation to generation. So in this process, uh, we found it is becoming very difficult for us to convince them and get it. So we thought, we will take the technology to their doorstep. And I devised a mobile laboratory through the organization. And we got the support. Believe me, we got the support from all government and the, the private companies. And this, this facility is worth about, at that point of time, this was created in 2005, uh, about uh, 70 lakhs. And, uh, this has the satellite uh, given by ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. Then a whole lot of other uh, things, and we have developed a robotic uh, scanner to scan the manuscripts. And uh, this, is the, this is the part A of the whole story. And there's a part B. And uh, that, that also I'm going to tell. The part B is how do we take, a, as a proof of concept, a, a certain knowledge available in this country to contextualize? So we chose. The, the, the biggest epic in this region, or I would, I would say uh, the biggest epic poem of the world, the Mahabharata. Itself as the, one of the uh, things, it is said that the Mahabharata is everything for human life. So uh, we took that as the, uh, the main idea because we can't do everything for the whole lot of knowledge that we have in this country. And we started creating what is called an encyclopedia of the Mahabharata. So that is part B of the whole thing. So this, as I, as, I, as I keep telling, when you dream something, the belief in the dream makes. I started as a small dream of digitizing the manuscripts, started developing tools. But then the president of India came down to inaugurate this. Two concepts which we started in 2005, 
And uh, in 2007, I got a presidential honor by Abdul Kalam and Rashtrapati Bhavan for the work that I did in digitizing this manuscript. We have digitized till date a million manuscripts in the one state of South India and Tamil Nadu itself on ancient Siddha medicinal manuscripts. This is about the second part. The Mahabharata, Sri Vedavyasa's 3,000-year-old literary masterpiece, with 18 chapters and around 100,000 verses. Four times longer than the Bible, seven times longer than the Iliad or the Odyssey. The Mahabharata, a historical saga of treachery intrigue and war, vastly profound and deeply philosophical. Two brothers there were, Pandu and Dhritarashtra. A story of noble characters wedged by dilemmas. On the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Arjuna succumbs to grief. An account of a fratricidal battle, a gripping plot intertwined with intricate subplots complex twists and turns, wheels within wheels, tails within tails, layers upon layers. The Mahabharata Vishwakosha, an attempt to unravel the great epic, put together its various interpretations, analyze it, collate it and categorize it. A comprehensive encyclopedia culled from over a thousand works of literature in over 15 languages. Everything about the Mahabharata will now come together in 18 volumes. Conflicting theories, little known facts, events, places and people. Indic scholars and subject specialists will work on this encyclopedia for the next five years to present an authentic, insightful, critical and contemporary view aimed at preserving and furthering the reach of the epic. The Bhagavad Gita, the Vishnu Sahasranama, Krishna Avatara and the story of the Great War itself. We take pride in launching the Mahabharata Vishwakosha. The last one which we moved from the intangible, we moved to tangible. This is what I presented in, uh, in TED last year. This is about Hampi, and uh, in order to achieve this, in fact, when we announced, uh, our CTO was in uh, the audience, and we landed up creating an institution so along with these partners. We created an India Innovations Lab this year. And uh, to close up, when a person really desires something, all the universe conspires to help the person to realize the dream. This is what is my experience. Thank you. Thank you.